Another factor that affects your brain performance is blood pressure. Your brain has got numerous wire-like cells that requires continuous blood supply, but the pressure at which this blood is supplied matters a lot. In this video, I'm going to break down the jargon around blood pressure and hypertension, discuss the relationship between brain performance and high blood pressure, main causes of high blood pressure, and ways to reduce high blood pressure and prevent hypertension. If you have hypertension or you take care of an hypertensive person, then this video is going to be very useful to you. But again, if you're not, I still believe that you'll have some takeaways that can help you to maintain a healthy life with normal blood pressure. Now let's get into it. Your body depends on blood circulation. And for blood to reach every part of your body, regardless of your position, it requires a force to propel it. And this is what we call the blood pressure. Your heart is the pump that produces this force and your arteries are the pipes through which the blood is propelled to every organ in your body, including your brain. Blood pressure has got two components, systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Systolic blood pressure, the upper number, is the number recorded when your heart is contracting, squeezing the blood into your arteries. In diastolic blood pressure, the lower number, is the pressure recorded when your heart is refilling with blood, the pressure between the beats. It is usually recorded as systolic over diastolic millimeters of mercury and normal blood pressure is usually 120 by 80 as shown here. Here is a guideline that can help you know where you belong. We have the normal blood pressure, hypertension stage 1, hypertension stage 2, and hypertensive crisis. Kindly note that any of these numbers can be used for your diagnosis, diastolic or systolic. When one of them is high, then you can be diagnosed with a certain stage of hypertension. This is important to you because you need to track down your numbers and ask about significant changes in your blood pressure. It may also help you identify your triggers. Now, how does hypertension affect brain performance? Hypertension damages arteries, making them more likely to burst. Just like when you're pumping water with a lot of pressure, the pipes may burst if the pressure is too high. When that happens, the blood may clot in the arteries in the brain, blocking blood flow, and that can potentially cause stroke, leading to vascular dementia. When your arteries are exposed to continuous high blood pressure, they develop a coping mechanism, making them thicker and stiffer so that they can withstand the pressure. When this happens, the volume of blood that they can carry reduces and this affects the amount of blood that gets into the brain. Remember, your brain is just 2% of your entire body, but it requires over 15% of the total cardiac output and 25% of the total oxygen that you inhale. The moment that is reduced, the performance of the brain will not be okay. Brain cells, the over 80 billion neurons, are very sensitive to oxygen supply. When you reduce the amount of blood that you supply to the brain, the oxygen supply is also reduced, and that can cause their death. High blood pressure also damages tiny arteries in the brain that supply these numerous brain cells with blood, depriving them of oxygen. All these conditions leads to cognitive decline, and cognitive decline includes reduced attention and concentration, memory problems, problems with language and communication, difficulty in decision making, and problems with sight. Keeping your blood pressure within the normal range is very important in preventing these conditions. What are the causes of high blood pressure? The first one is being overweight or obese. You need to monitor your BMI and ensure that your BMI is within the normal range. If you don't have any clue on how to monitor your BMI, then you can refer to the last episode on brain and blood sugar, where I delved so much on BMI, how to calculate it, and how to maintain a healthy BMI. Other causes are sedentary lifestyle, high salt intake, too much alcohol intake, and smoking cigarettes. All these causes that I've mentioned are modifiable causes. That means that you can do something about them. But there are other two causes that you don't have a hand in, but you can still do something to maintain your blood pressure. 
The two causes include age and genetics. Blood pressure increases with age. And for age, you know that there's nothing that you can do. You cannot reduce the number of years that you've spent here on earth. As you age, your heart and arteries become more thicker and stiffer. They lose their flexibility and elasticity. And that makes them to require more force, more pressure to pump the blood. You can delay onset of this problem by making lifestyle changes now. Genetics means that you're more susceptible to salt. You are very sensitive to salt. And again, this you can modify by making diet changes so that you don't take a lot of salt. And again, I forgot another important cause, stress and anxiety. That increases your blood pressure. So you also need to monitor your stress level. The last part of this video, and it is the most important one. What can you do to reduce high blood pressure and prevent hypertension? Number one, know your numbers. Go for checkup. Actually, recent studies have shown that over 40% of those who are hypertensive do not know their status. Number two, take your medication as prescribed by your doctor. Nearly half of those who are hypertensive do not have their pressure under control according to CDC, Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Number three, follow a DASH diet. DASH diet is the dietary approach to stop hypertension. Choose foods rich in potassium, calcium, magnesium, fiber, and protein, and low in saturated fats and salts. The minerals you can get by taking plenty of fruits and vegetables. For example, banana is very rich in potassium, but that does not mean that you take four bananas at a go. Meal proportion and frequency is very important when you are monitoring your diet. Take the right meal proportions depending on your BMI, and that's where we nutritionists come in. Work with your nutritionist so that you can come up with a good meal proportion and don't forget about meal frequency. You may be eating small amount of food, but very frequently. So the frequency also matters a lot. Reduce meat and fat consumption. Go for plant-based proteins such as beans, peas, lentils. Include low-fat dairy products, nuts, poultry, and fish. Reduce the amount of sodium you take. Go for low-sodium diet. Also limit the amount of processed food that you consume. Processed foods have hydrogenated fats and they also have high salt. So when you reduce them, you improve your diet. Number four, monitor your BMI. Remember, you should remain within the normal weight. I talked about BMI early, but it is very important because being overweight or obese increases your chances of developing hypertension. And the last two are very notorious culprits in destroying your brain. Reduce your alcohol intake and stop smoking cigarettes. And now we've come to the end of this video. I hope you've learned something and this is the end of the brain care series. Kindly monitor your lifestyle. Actually all these trickle down to your lifestyle. Monitor your diet, monitor your BMI, avoid taking uh, alcohol, smoking, reduce caffeine, learn new things, learn new skills, and you'll delay the onset of aging of your brain. So thank you so much for watching. Let's meet in another video.